Let's dissipate that pumpkin. <laughs> I think he'll remember me. Let's try a red plate now. Let's try a different red plate. Uh, it's a keeper. I wonder if I can hit that two liter over there. It's going to keep from hitting the pig with it. All right. Red plate. Click. <laughs> All right. Hey, it didn't keep the mag, the bolt back, did it? All right. Let's make sure it's empty. All right. We've got a Wyndham weaponry. Yes. And uh, this is Hickok 45, if you didn't know it. We've had a lot of requests to look at the Wyndham Weaponry ARs uh, for actually years, I guess. And so we're going to do it. And we've got some comparison here we'll do, give you an idea of uh, what this crazy dissipator is, okay? Uh, because it's a little different animal. And uh, you might wonder why I would be attracted to a dissipator. And uh, you may not even know what it is. So uh, hopefully we'll remedy that situation. And uh, on both counts, let you know what it is, why I kind of like them. Okay. So wind and weaponry, I just, uh, because we've had so many requests, and uh, I guess with the election season, I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy another AR, I think. And I'm going to get a Wyndham weaponry. And I just ordered it. It buds. Okay. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about this. If you don't know anything, you may know the whole story, and I want to give you just enough of it uh, so you'll have an appreciation for Wyndham weaponry, because for years I've really meant to, to get a hold of one. It just hadn't happened. Uh, nobody's like that I know had one to lend, or hey, you want to use this firearm? And, and I, I just have been negligent, I guess, because I know the story. I have known it just enough to be dangerous. I know it a little bit better now, I think. I've done some research, but you know, yeah, I've known the story. I just know the, didn't know the specifics, and some of that could be wrong. You can you can chime in if you know a little bit more about it. Maybe you work at Wyndham uh, Weaponry, and have worked there since the old Bush, Bushmaster days. Okay, because most of you are familiar with Bushmaster. They've been around a long time. They started. I think the company started in about '73, and then Richard Dyke bought it in '76, moved it to Wyndham, Maine. Okay, and they cranked out a bunch of ARs over the decades. And, uh, and then, and when was it, about 2006, they uh, sold, he sold it to, it was a, it was a group, uh, uh, man, capital, capital management group of some kind, I think. And then that same year, Freedom, Freedom Group became part of that and became the owner and all that. It all happened around 2006, I think. So Freedom Group is the one you've probably heard about the most, and maybe not in complimentary terms. So they've been owned by Freedom Group since around 2006. Okay, that's the bottom line. Well, they're still in Maine, still in Wyndham. And then the problem started occurring, I think it was when they moved. I don't think they had problems. Now, they might if you worked there, let us know. But they were in Wyndham building you know, Bushmasters just under new ownership. So the, sometimes that goes okay, sometimes it doesn't. The biggest problem, as I understand, was when uh, Freedom Group moved them to New York, okay? Illy in New York, I think, in 2011. So, wow, there went all the jobs, all these expert AR builders. The, and Bushmaster had a great reputation. It really did. I, I remember those days back in the, I guess it was the 80s, the 90s especially. In the 80s, I'm not sure. I bought my first one, which is on the table, in the 80s. And then I was doing other guns and things. And I I think it was the 90s before I got a little more interested in maybe some other brands. But there weren't that many. You didn't have 95 different AR makers, you know, in the 80s and the 90s. And Bushmaster, though, was one of them. It was kind of like Colt, Smith & Wesson. You know, I mean, it was Colt and it was uh, Bushmaster. And Bushmaster had a really good reputation. I remember people arguing about which was better, Colt or Bushmaster, you know, and some people swore that Colt was, like the old Ford Chevy argument, you know, and uh, a lot of people thought Bushmaster was better than Colt at that time. So whatever your image is, the connotation is in your mind, when you hear Bushmaster, 
at that time in the 90s, it was it was quality. And I guess the early 2000s as well. It, I mean, it was early 2000s. And a lot of people bought it. I bought one in 99, okay? It didn't have, the, it was during the crime bill craziness. It didn't have the bayonet lug on it. And, uh, and I eventually traded or sold it. But I bought it over a Colt. It might have been a little less money, uh, but I mean, it just had a great reputation. So I had one. And it's, this is one right here. We've got it out here. This is uh, one John bought in 2008. So, and it's, it was made in Wyndham, Maine. It's got Wyndham on it. You know, it was made in Wyndham in 2008, of course. And that was just right after, you know, the purchase and all that. So, and I guess, I think I got my dates right. Maybe it was 2008 that the uh, Freedom Group took ownership. No, I think it was 2006, but right in there. And uh, so they were still there in, in uh, Wyndham, Maine, building them you know, up until 2011, okay? So around 2010 or 11, then Freedom Group decided you're going to be moving. I think it was like the spring, March or something of 2011, they were going to move them to New York. So I don't know what happened during that specific period of time in terms of quality and how, how things went, you know, with all those people knowing they were losing their jobs and that kind of thing. I just don't know. I know we have a similar story with Marlin, you know. But anyway, they moved to New York in 2011. And uh, so Bushmaster, of course, still exists, make guns, and they're in New York and all that. Well, in 2011, the former owner, Richard Dyke, he still owned the facilities and he had all these experts still there, unemployed for the most part. And he just started up a new company with those people, okay? Wyndham Weaponry. So you could say this really is Bushmaster, the Bushmaster, the original Bushmaster company under a different name, Wyndham Weaponry, all right? And I've known that, and that's why I've always uh, I've been interested uh, in passing at least in the company, in these guns. John and I stopped at their booth at SHOT Show in January, and we talked to them. And they talked about you know being you know anxious to send us anything that we were interested in uh, you know testing and that kind of thing and we just hadn't gotten around to it, but I like the story the fact that they they kind of said well you guys move we're going to start up and continue building these things and uh, up yours kind of thing and it's it's great and so I, that's one reason I bought one it's just the kind of company you want to support okay seem like great people on top of that after speaking with them at SHOT Show. So anyway, I just went in and bought one and then that's kind of the, the story there. Uh, so they're going great guns. They have lots of different models and they have a good reputation. And there's a lot of AR builders out there, of course, but uh, they make a good one. Uh, the Dissipator, let me shoot this thing and show you a little bit about it. I'll shoot, uh, let's shoot something different. Let's shoot some green tip, evil green tip. Uh, let's see, now I even have different magazines here. I got a Lancer magazine. All right. Now I'll take a couple of shots with green tip. Look at that poor pumpkin. He doesn't look really happy, does he? Let's put a couple more on him. <laughs> yeah, we'll just let him hit the ground. Uh, let's put a couple on this target. I'll have to hold high. Yeah, I've told you all about that. Of course, the sight, you know, plane of sight being higher than the board. How about a bowling pin? Yeah. <laughs> I think I just shot the cap off of that thing. Oh, I love it. I love it. Oh, there's some cinder blocks over there. Yeah. That's fun. Look at the dust. Let's try a red plate up there while well, it's in the dust. Burn barrel. Okay, it's empty. We got her held back. I don't know why the Magpul, the Magpuls generally hold the bolt back. Okay. Uh, I don't know how old that one is. I don't think it's very old. I don't know. I get good service out of Magpuls and Lancers for that is. Okay. So, Dissipator. Uh, this is fun. This is a fun gun. The only thing that's not original is I, I replaced this, the stock that had this on it, which is fine. And I, I like these uh, Mission First 
minimalist stock. See, I've got one on my, no, I don't. I've got one on another gun, not on, I thought I did. Yeah, that, I, I like that. Uh, that's the Daniel Defense. I like that one okay, so I didn't replace that. But I tend to replace these. Okay, I've got one on my other Daniel Defense. That's right. And I had one on that little lone wolf I had, which is still on there, actually. And that's another story. I tried to put it on this gun, and it uh, turns out this has a commercial uh, uh, buffer tube on it, and I didn't realize that, okay, at the time, and couldn't get it on there. So we'll talk about that a little bit. The dissipator. Okay, first thing now. Uh, you know, why is it called a dissipator? Uh, it, in a nutshell, it's because it has a 16-inch barrel, but it still has this long sight radius. Okay, that's the that's the short answer. 16-inch barrel, long sight radius, and in order to do that and make it a reliable rifle, this sight is not the uh, the gas block. The gas block is it's a carbine length, and it's right there. Okay, so you got the carbine length gas block. Just like the Daniel Defense has, which has a mid-length, but it's under the, uh, the four in there. Okay. Now on this old A2, the sight is the gas block. Okay, that's the gas block. There's not a gas block under here. Okay. And on this one, that's the gas block as well. The sight is normally the gas block. Okay. So we're kind of going back in time a little bit. You would not have any interest in this probably unless you were going to shoot it with iron sights most likely okay and you like the the old school style of AR okay that's where this shines so we if we go back 20 years or longer then this is a really interesting concept as I understand in Vietnam they took some of the standard uh, UM16s and they, they just whacked off the barrel they tried to achieve the shorter barrel at the time now in today's world because you know everybody has an M4 you know a clone or something and with a 16 inch barrel then we don't that's just very 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 common and popular so we don't think much about that but back in the day uh it, it was more difficult to get a shorter barrel okay before the m4 days and so if you whack that off like that just to get a shorter barrel then you end up with some problems because the gas port is a uh, block is up is up too far it's up it's too close to the end of the barrel okay and I'm not a scientist, even though I pretend to be one, but you have less dwell time, what it's called. If the, when the round, uh, the gas begins to escape and come back up into, there's a hole in the barrel. We've got a video on that. Uh, it's called gas systems and right, I don't forget what we called it. We've got a video on it, how these things actually work. And so I won't go into all of that, but there's a hole in the barrel. And as the bullet passes this little hole in the barrel, the gases go up that, and they're gonna go somewhere because there's a hole in the barrel, and they go into this tube that runs back here and forces the bolt back. That's how they operate, okay? Well, you know, you need to have a certain amount of barrel left after that gas escapes, so you have enough dwell time so that pressures, you know, will knock the bolt back, okay? For example, if the port was like right at the end of the barrel, like that far from the, the muzzle uh, flash height or something there, it just wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because the, you know the gas the bullet's gone and all the gas it wouldn't be enough to, to knock it back okay so that's why you, if you read much on it or you hear people talking and arguing about mid-length gas systems and carbine length gas systems you know and arguing about which is better and which is more reliable there is a reliability factor there and so they were messing with the reliability when they did that with the old m16s and they had some problems okay because there wasn't enough barrel left and that's what kind of determines the reliability factor. Other things too, ammo, I guess, powder, whatever you're doing, and uh, all the, the port size, all that makes a difference. But you need to have some distance to, for that pressure to you know, knock things back. Uh, as I understand now, there are some people making these that they're actually doing that though, like those early ones, but they've, they figured out the size of the port that's needed, the hole in the barrel, in order to get enough blast back to, to make it operate reliably, okay? And not have to boo, do a hidden gas block under the forearm, okay? Uh, I don't know, it, it may work okay. I don't mind this, this is, this is fine. The sight is not a gas block, it's just a sight. Uh, the gas block is right here, and it's a carbine length, and of course we know that that generally works, and that's the important thing, all right? So what's the benefit of it? Again, today, it's, it's, it's a little bit like talking about how you improve your flintlock in a way. Because we're, we're so used to rifles like this, where 
okay, it's not a big deal. You know, you got this uh, rail, monolithic rail type thing, and you put the gas block wherever you want to under there, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't affect your sights. Your sights are totally separate from the gas block, right? Whether it's mid-length or carbine length, it doesn't matter. Your sights gonna be right there probably if you have iron sights. If you're gonna have a red dot, it's gonna be back here or here or scope, whatever you're gonna put on it. Your sights are, are not, there's not a relationship there between your sights and, and where the gas block is or your gas system, All right? So it's, it's almost like, you know, like I'm talking about stuff that, that some of you probably, well, why is that even an issue, you know? So it's not, you know, with rifles like that. But with these, it is kind of an issue. And I remember back in, I guess it was the 90s, early 90s maybe, uh, I had my Bushmaster, I had a catalog of, uh, of their various uppers and, and firearms. And I have always kind of wanted a dissipator. I thought that's a cool concept because again, this is back before this was so common. Okay, maybe a good while before that. And I thought you can imagine being six eight. That's kind of cool because this is a 16 inch barrel. It's the same length barrel as that and, and this, see, basically. And, uh, but yet you've got the same grip as you do in this old A2, see, full length rifle. This is a rifle, you know. So you got the same foreign, and that was the attraction to me back then. I thought, you know, that would be cool. And I really was going to buy an upper from Bushmaster, a dissipator. And I think I heard somebody talk about how they might not be as reliable or, I don't know, somebody was dissing them a little bit or something. I just never did do it. But it's always appealed to me to have a rifle that feels like this, but have the barrel shorter, a 16-inch barrel. And that's basically what you get with this. So I should have bought one back in the 90s, the early 90s, uh, whenever that was, because it feels just like that rifle, the same you know, stock and the form. It just, it's plenty long, it feels great. But yet I've got a handier length barrel. And that was of course the attraction early on for even doing this was to have uh, a shorter barrel, more maneuverable and everything, and then have a long sight radius. And then you know, have this long port and it's really comfy. Because you know what you get with this, this typical carbine of this design is you get this short little uh, four in there grip, not much, barely room enough for your hand. And of course your sights are closer. Look at your sight radius. Put these together. See the difference in sight radius, see? And, and, but that's where the gas block needed to be. So there's not much you can do. You can't just move that out here somewhere, you know, okay? So I don't know if that confused you more than you're already confused, but so we still got the we still got the gas block and and the port in the same place on these two rifles. That's the thing. That's the key. See, it's right about here. It's right about here. It's just that it's under here, okay, on this rifle, and the uh, the sight is not part of it. That's the difference, okay. So I've got a rifle that feels like a rifle, and but yet it's a short, handy, you know, piece of equipment. It's no longer really than that one, your average M4, okay? So that's kind of the, the short, <laughs> if that was short, uh, the quick and dirty on the dissipator. Something that a lot of you probably had no interest in, uh, but I, I'm a little bit old school. I like these old school ARs. I like the new school ones or else I wouldn't have bought that. But I think this is kind of cool, and I just want to want, if I was going to get a Wyndham Weaponry, another AR, and I don't need any more ARs for sure, uh, I, I would get something different. I didn't really want a pistol, and, uh, and I saw this at their website, I thought, that's it, that's it. That takes me back 20 years. I wanted one of those a long time ago. I'm going to order it, okay? It's, it's a great shooter, okay? Feels good. Speaking of that. Let's shoot something, we, uh, we shot that, let's shoot some, I know, it. I've got a little 62 grain standard ammo here. And, and uh, this is a, yeah, Daniel Defense magazine. I bought a few of those, I'll try them out. They're actually 32 rounders. And you notice how, and I think I have 30 rounds in there and it just clips in so nicely. So I always like that. Uh, oh, well, bolt wasn't closed for one reason. All right, let's take a few shots. I think the uh, Daniel Defense magazine will make the firearm a lot more accurate too. Don't you imagine? Let's go bowling. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, there's another two liter. There's some.
Okay, I was trying to hold a little too high. You don't have to even at that distance. Not bad. Let's hit this bowling pin. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna go back over there, try a red plate again. A different one, a middle one. Nice, pulling the trigger before I was ready. So that's what that is. That is a dissipator. And uh, I kind of like that magazine. Um, now let's give you a little uh, specifics on this. Wyndham Weaponry. Now, I've done some, some research. I've prowled around the internet. And what I have discovered, people really like these guys. Okay, and I'm not selling them, uh, buying them, bought one. But people like them. They really do. And uh, I've seen several people make the comment they thought they were, they were even better than the old Bushmasters. And those had a good reputation. So I don't know, in terms of finish and just, just everything. So I don't know. I mean, these are both nice. So the main thing is they, there was no drop in quality, apparently, because they got the same people making these things. And I think they probably got their competitive juices up, too, when they reopened that factory and started making these things again. And uh, they wanted to make a good rifle, I'm sure. So a lot of experience there. And uh, pretty cool that they're essentially still in business. Just under a different name when you get right down to it. Uh, Wyndham Weaponry, Wyndham, Maine. The, the rifle itself, again, I've replaced the stock. We'll start at the back here maybe, uh, go just quickly. I replaced that, as I told you, that's a mission first. I kind of like those. They seem to add just a little bit of length to the stock too for me. And that, that's another reason I like them. And uh, it does have a commercial buffer tube, okay? I had I was trying to force a uh, mil spec onto it. The, on that, you get uh, different stories. But generally speaking, the commercial versus mil spec on the tube, not much difference. They both work. Uh, the commercial tube is a little slightly larger. And so you just need to know when you go to buy something. Like when I bought this, I had to get a commercial size uh, uh, stock to put on it. And I think they don't stake their... They're uh, castle nuts, so you got to make sure that's tight. You can stake it, of course, if you want to. And uh, in terms of the interior, stuff is, is mil spec inside. They, uh, they do all the stuff. They've got the, what, the 158 carpenter steel in the bolt and uh, the magnetic particle testing and all that. They've got the staked gas key. So they know what they're doing, and they pretty much do it correctly. If you know something different, let us know. But they, uh, they do all the stuff that you want, the, you know, like the... The uh, upper, the lower, it's at what, 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum, the, supposedly the best of that. Uh, you know, they, they just do it right. You got a nice A4, I think it's an A4 rear sight. And I know that looks kind of archaic with the handle. That's removable, of course. You could take it off and you could put something else there. I probably won't even take it off. Uh, let's see what else here. The barrel, <coughs> excuse me, the barrel is a one in nine twist one and nine so it's uh kind of designed for your lighter bullets which most of us shoot most of the ammo we get is like between 50 and 60 62 grains if you're going to shoot a lot of heavy uh ammo from like the 60s and 70 grain ammo a match ammo and that kind of thing you might want a one in seven twist or something a, a faster twist but uh you know for most of the shooting that that i do and most people do i guess uh that's fine they don't know you might prefer a different twist, but it's one and nine. And uh, what else we got here? This anything different? Uh, you got, of course, all your stuff you'd expect: forward assist there and everything, uh, dust cover, metal. Everything's metal. Uh, I think even though, yeah, the trigger guard cover and everything is aluminum. Um, like I said, the barrel. Now the barrel is is good steel. It's uh, whatever 4150 uh, chrome molly vanadium. I mean, this and it's chrome lined. All the stuff you're supposed to do. There may be ways to make them better, but I've not made any. I'm not sure what it involves. Uh, what else? You got your regular, regular A2 flash hider. Got your all-important bayonet lug. Um, if I'm forget, and uh, the heat shield is. Uh, it's got a really good heat shield on it, so you don't get burned. Uh, just a, a, a nice basic rifle. 
and they they show on <coughs> excuse me msrp is around 1100 and something but uh generally they run around eight something like 850. so they're not the lowest end but they're I, i'd say it's kind of a bargain for a really well made one from a very reputable company you know just like the old bushmasters uh, so so anyway pretty cool let me shoot just a couple more and uh, see if there's any other lies i need to tell you about it i, I really feel good about uh uh uh, you know, supporting the company, put it that way. Now you may hate them. You know, I'm sure they've got their haters like everybody does, but uh, I just feel good about <laughs> buying a rifle from them. And one reason I bought it, I just wanted to feel good. All right. They got that thing going again and uh, they are going strong apparently. All right, let's go back over there. Nice, nice. Uh, it was something I just thought of and it left my brain. Oh, I know what it was. It just came back to my brain. The trigger, trigger is just mil spec. I didn't change out the trigger. It's, uh, it's kind of what you'd expect, you know, a mil spec trigger, but it's, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's not as bad as the one that uh, came on the Colt over there, the A2. Sweet. All right, barrel. <laughs> and a cloud of dust. Yeah, it's not warm really, just, just barely at all. So it's got a nice heat shield in there. Uh, so again, you might think it's kind of silly, a uh, dissipator, but uh, I think I gave you kind of the quick and dirty on that. Uh, you get, you know, again, your gas blocks under here. It, it, you can call it a fake. I posted on Instagram some, a picture of it and someone said, ah, it's got a fake sight or something. Yeah, yeah, it's the sight, it's the sight I use. It's not too fake. It's got your standard sight there, front sight. It's just that it's not uh, working as a gas block. Gas block's right here. So you get your reliable uh, carbine length gas block, just like the other Bushmaster there. Uh, so it should be just as reliable as that. It's got the same length barrel and everything. So you've just been able, because of that, to stretch out the hand guard there and get a longer sight radius, which is, I guess, a lot of the motivation for the, the full rails and the flat top, you know, ARs and everything. So, but if you're like me, you, you, you can't help but uh, find these old classic looking ARs uh, appealing. And uh, they're, they're just cool. Uh, they really are. Uh, I don't know that I'll change anything else on it or, or if I'll even put a mil spec tube on it. I, I don't know. Uh, it, Seems to be fine from what I understand. People get the same service out of those. Most of mine are mil spec. I think all of them are except for this. So it's kind of a new experience for me and it surprised me. But it, yeah, they work too. So not a big deal. So Wyndham Weaponry, uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh, apparently a well run company making some good ARs and they have a long heritage really when you get right down to it at least the people there do and even the plant man, uh, factory where they make them you know, going way back into the the 70s so it's pretty cool life is good since i'm still here let me thank sdi for all their help sdi is a fully accredited online gunsmithing school check them out at sdi.edu we'd also like to thank bud's gun shop and federal premium for all of their support you can find us on Full 30 also now, and you can find the links to our Facebook pages and the other YouTube pages in the description of any video. So I invite you to check out the description in every video or any video, you'll find what you need to know. And you'd better do it.